God, glory to God. We want to welcome everybody out to Hawthorne Christian Center, glory to God. The fastest growing church in the Piedmont Trenton area, glory to God. Thank you, praise team. We want to just give honor to our pastors, Pastor Eric and Denise Baker, celebrating 28 years of marriage. Amen, glory to God. So they'll, they'll be back in the house, glory to God, real soon. Uh, one of the things we want to do is, you always want to give people their flowers while they're, while they're here. Amen. You know, marriage, I, I, I said it last week, marriage is not easy. You may be seated. Marriage is not easy, but it has benefits. Amen. And the benefits that come from it are promises from, from, from up above. When you find a wife, you find a good thing, and that gives you faith. So when you guys get ready to get to that point, and you find your good thing, you're going to have faith. So big shout out to our pastors while they're enjoying themselves. Uh, for you guys that want to be a blessing to them, there's a way you can be able to give to our pastors for their anniversary. You can go on our website. You can go to HP christiancenter.com and you can designate uh, pastor's anniversary, love offering whatever you want to do just to show them we love them, amen for you guys that are in the church right now we do have a box up here you can show your love, just put a little something, put something in there right just to show your appreciation I know they are, they are a, a couple after God's own heart they are pastors after God's own heart amen so I'm just excited for them. I talked to them a little bit earlier this week. They just enjoy themselves. And that's what it's all about. As, as, as a family, as a couple, you got to enjoy time with your family. You got to. Because you never know. Even though we know the hairs on our head are numbered, but you don't know when that last day will be with your loved one. Only God knows. The creator of the universe knows these things. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness and mercy. We praise you, Lord, for your wonderful works. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've done in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're going to do. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you to have your way this morning in this service. We ask that you bless the people that are listening, whether on the website, in the parking lot, in the church, glory to God. We pray, Lord, something that will be said will be a blessing to them, Lord God. I pray that I decrease that you may have the increase in me, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, I wanted to say this. The reason why I said you don't know, enjoy your family, spend time with them, enjoy the little quirky things that your kids, that your, that your cousins do. Enjoy those moments because you don't know. Amen. So, right now, I, I, I just want to take a moment and, 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 uh, and pray for Shaquilla Robinson, you guys probably know she lost her life in, uh, I think, New Mexico last week. And the, the parents are grieving. The family is grieving. Uh, she's out of, I think, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So we just want to take a moment and just, just pray for her. So you guys will take a moment of silence. But uh, I, I just want to take a moment and pray for her family. Because I don't know about y'all, but if you ever, have the, if you ever lost a young person in your family, it's tough. I lost, I lost. When I say I mean my wife and her family, my family, we lost our nephew years and years ago. But there ain't a, there ain't a time where I don't ride down the street and I think about them. So it don't matter how they live, but they're no longer here. All right? So, Lord, we just lift up the family of uh, Shaki, Shakina uh, Kilo Robinson, Lord God. We pray, Lord, for, for peace in the midst of everything going on, Lord. We pray, Lord, for revelation that they'll understand what happened to their daughter. Glory to God, that someone will speak up and say what happened, Lord God. But I pray most of all, Lord God, that they have peace in the midst of everything going on. That they have a clear understanding, Lord God. They'll have all the assistance that they need to find out what happened to their child, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, for every woman, every man that has lost a child for whatever reason, Lord God. I pray they have peace in the midst, Lord God, that they'll remember the good things about their loved ones. And I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So 
Right now, we want to thank everybody. You can take, if you would, everybody, even in here, pull out your phones. You got your phones. Take a moment. Share High Point Christian Center. Share the service, Lord God, for you guys that are at home. You're on the website. You're on the live right now on Facebook. Take a minute. Pull out that phone. Hit like, share, and let somebody be blessed. Come to High Point Christian Center is on the air. Amen. Glory to God. Well, go give God some praise then. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We had an awesome prayer this morning. Thank you guys for coming out. I'm going to be praying, not praying, I already prayed, but we're going to pick up where we uh, were last week. And my topic is faith will come. You have to saw it before you see it. I know that sounds kind of weird. Faith will come. You have to saw it before you see it. So that's something that God said to me, God, I don't know how long ago. But he told me you got to saw it before you see it. And I thought, that doesn't even sound right. But how many of you guys know when God do stuff, it doesn't necessarily have to sound right? You remember when the prophet came, the prophet, uh, the man of God told, told the ruler, he said, I want you to go and bathe in the, the, the lake, it was a dirty lake. It was a, one of the dirtiest lakes or rivers you could ever want to go in. He said, I want you to go and bathe yourself seven times. And this man was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a big man on, in my city. I got people to give me a bath. Yeah, you know, people, when you got money like that, there will be, you see it all the time. They, they, they didn't have to do nothing like that. They had people that had oils and all kinds of perfume and special things, right? But, but the man of God said, I want you to go bathe seven times in the dirtiest river that you can find. And he said, after that, that seven times, you'll be healed. See, a lot of times God will tell us to do stuff that don't make sense. Amen. He'll tell you to go to a place that do not make sense. And then all of a sudden you go like, why am I even here? I, first of all, I stick out like a sore thumb. Why am I here? Mm -hmm. But when God tells you to do it, do it. There's a reason why he wants you to go to that place. See, thank you. That part. I like that. This, this is good. I, 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 no, I took your brain. I took it, right? <laughs> so, faith will come, but you say, well, well, Minister Ron, what is faith? Thank you for asking. What is faith? Faith is that tangible thing that you have until a real thing shows up. You can use your faith. Pastor Eric said, you remember when you first got saved? Man, you just ask God for something, boom, and it show up. Something you didn't even have to even think about it. But all of a sudden, I remember when I first came to this ministry, I wanted a, uh, I wanted a new suit, and I wanted to dress sharp like 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 our pastor, you know. And he gave me my first nice necktie. Yeah. It was black and brown with paisley. Boy, I wore that thing to work. I was playing too, boy. I will claim because I had my bishop, my pastor necktie on. But what, what was he doing? I prayed and I said, Lord, I want. He told us, he said, start up. Don't start with nothing, baby. He said, pick something out and pray for it. Get you a scripture and stand on it. And so I wanted neckties, you know, because I like neckties. You know, obviously, I like bow ties. And I started out with neckties. And then I started out with socks. I like socks too. You know, I like the socks to coordinate. Like my man say, coordinate. You probably say, well, what is that? You can just go out and buy that. Yeah, but sometimes you can go out and buy it. But when you know how to work your faith, there's certain things you can't buy. Like for instance, I told you when uh, when they diagnosed my, my wife with brain cancer. See, I don't care how much money you got. There were people over there at that cancer center. They had much more money than we had. But we got faith. Amen. There was a young man over there. He was, he was younger than my wife. This guy, brain cancer. He couldn't even walk. By the time he left there, he, I think he might have been in a wheelchair. There were some people who went over there to go through the cancer treatment. Guess what? They had to stay four or five hours in the hospital bed before they could release them. My wife went ahead and did her treatment. 
You got on up and she left. You see what I'm talking about? That's faith. See, it didn't, it didn't start the minute they told her she had brain cancer. It started the minute we gave our life to Christ and the man and woman of God taught us faith. Amen. See, it started out small with neckties. Amen. Socks. He said pick underwear. Whatever it is you want to pick and believe God for. Amen. And be specific. Write it down. Amen. How back in 2 and 2 said, do what? Right. Write the vision. Make it plain that, that those who see it, they can take it and run with it. Amen. Whatever you want in life, write it down. The word call it a vision board. Amen. See, you, you got to saw it before you see it. When you create a vision board, you see it way down the line what you want. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. See, when they told my wife she had brain cancer, see, we already had faith. But all we need to do is kick it up a notch. Amen. We need to kick it up a notch, and then we need to give God praise in the midst of everything going on. Amen. Once you write that thing out, what it, what it is that you want, you pray about it, you give it to God, then you continue to praise God for it. Amen. Amen. Guess what? It's going to be over two years now. So then, we still got over some things. Amen. But at the end of the day, when I look at some of the other people that were going through the same thing, and they're not here anymore. I don't know why he saw fit to let my wife live. Because you know what? That's my girl. She's been riding with me for a long time, man. So when you find one that's good, she's true to the game like that, yo, you better stick with him. You better stick with them. I, I didn't even get up here to talk about that. But it's not like things are easy. Come on. Guess what? There were times I had to get in my car and I had to ride. Because stuff coming at you. While she's battling on one end, I'm battling on the other end. Amen. Amen. I'm getting back to work not knowing, not knowing whether or not my job was still available to me. Because I still got to be able to provide, take care of my wife and my daughter. Amen. And I get back to work. And guess what? Probably 85% of the stuff that I was doing, I was told that it's no longer my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, where does that leave me? Mm -hmm. I ain't never shared that. Mm -hmm. I know people that got to share everything. I, don't, I, I do talk a lot now. But I only talk about certain things. Right. Amen. Share what you need to. Share what you need to. I, I did a training last week, uh, and I told the people, a dog that would bring a bone would carry a bone. Yeah. I'll let you figure that out what that means. Yeah. Anybody that's quick to bring you something, you better watch them. Yeah. What's their reason? What's their motive? Well, I'm talking about faith. See, when you're dealing with faith, you gotta you got to watch what you hear. you got to watch what you see, and you most definitely got to watch what you say. Amen. That's good preaching. Amen. For by it, what? What is it? Faith. Amen. The elders obtained, verse number two, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. Verse number three says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so, the, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. So the things that are, that are seen, they're made by an unseen force. When, when you speak positive things over your children, positive things come back. My daughter told me, she said, first she said, I want to be a lawyer. I said, well, I can see that because she liked to fight for the underdog. She about like her dad. See, I, I like to fight for people who don't have a fighting chance. Amen. And I really don't care what side of town you come from, but if, if I look at you and I feel like you need a helping hand, I got you. Amen. See, sometimes I don't have to give you no money, but I can say a quick prayer. I say, Lord, go with those young folks. Amen. 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 And so she says, I want to be a lawyer. I said, cool. Let's look and see what schools have the best lawyer, lawyer program out there. What well, that, that, that changed. She said, nah, I don't want to do that. I want to do international business. 
Okay. I want to do international business for a major and a minor in uh, interior design. Okay. Then, that, then I said, well, that makes sense. She's very autistic like her daddy. But here's the thing. She played one game for like, I'm talking about faith, what faith would do. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm talking about how she switched her major and uh, kept her mind. But here's the thing. She's been playing this little game uh, on interior design for about five years and made millions of dollars. You know, they got games where you can play and, and create build, design buildings, all that stuff. She's been playing this game forever. So when she said it, it made sense. But the thing we've been doing, I've been confessing that she get in the best school of her choice, the school that God has for her, that she'll be on the dean's list, that she'll have favor with her professors. And I ain't just start. I've been praying this over her all her life. Amen. Why? Because a man and woman of God taught us faith. Amen. Faith is what you have until the real thing shows up. Amen. And so, as we went up on the campus, we went up on several different campuses, guess what? My wife was with me in a wheelchair. It was hot. It was hard. We went to one campus. All they had was hill. They didn't have no, I don't want to say they didn't have no handicap uh, accessibility ramp, but they didn't have many. But you know what we did? I pushed them. I pushed my wife. Hot. I was sweating. Calves burning. Calves burning. Because she couldn't get up and walk. She still got a little look at her walking through here right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You think he won't? Man, I'm going to tell you, God showed out so much. So we're walking around on campus. We went to three or four different campuses. And she ended up where she wanted to go because they had everything that she had to offer. And let me go ahead, go ahead and tell you this. Like, she just got her a scholarship to travel abroad. Hallelujah. Look at God. Man, when I tell you, that's right. When God show up, He'll show out for you, folks. He'll show out for you. But here's the thing. See, she had this testimony that she listened to her parents. I'm not saying she agreed with everything, but she listened. And this is what I told her. I said, if you be respectful to your adults, people will be a blessing to you. But if you quit to clap back when grown folks say something, they will do nothing for you. As a matter of fact, they will speak curses on you. You think you think grown folk won't speak a curse on you? Let me tell you about a little. Uh, 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 I, I won't say his name, but this young guy, man, we we were friends back in the day. But he was quick with his mouth. He was quick with his mouth, man. And man, he said something to my grandma out of the left side of his face. Well, I was quick with mine too. I was quick with my, with my hands too. <laughs> <laughs> That's my brother right there. We fought one time. <laughs> that boy, that boy can fight that damn boy. Let me tell you, I struggled. But anyway, that was my brother though. But you know, you can have best friends. Y'all gonna fight. Amen. But you ain't gonna let nobody else mess with you. Amen. See, you ain't gonna let nobody else mess with you. That's a little sidebar. But I'm just talking about, you gotta be careful with your association. Amen. But get back to this guy that said something out the way to my grandmother. My grandmother told me, said, and, I, and I, I read, it almost reminded me of what Whoopi Goldberg said to, to that guy. Until you do right by me, what you've done to me, you've done to you. I don't know what them two fingers meant, but it didn't mean good because this stuff went right at me. Right? But anyway, he said something out of the way to my grandmother. And she said, young man, she said, that mouth of yours is going to get you in trouble. She said, you don't talk to grown people like that. And my grandma was a praying woman. Do you know, do you know that boy broke his arm? He broke his arm after I went up in his house and, and whooped up on him and threw him in the trash can. <laughs> I didn't break his arm though, but I fought him. Because see, now I'm trying to be God. See, don't try to be God when people come up against you like that. Wow. If people say something out of, out of the left side of their face about your loved one, don't try to fight them. You let God fight your battle. See, she, she didn't need my help. I should have known that. This woman had prayed in faith and food showed up. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand, growing up in a project, 
How many of you guys went to McDonald's when you were kids? You went to McDonald's, you got your Big Mac. I ain't get all that. I got a Big Mac when I went to high school. That was my first time getting a Big Mac. But I'm talking about what faith will do. But she didn't speak anything negative over his life, but what she told him was, if you don't line up and change your attitude about grown folk, something bad gonna happen to you. That's a law. That's a law. Yeah. That's a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law. When the Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go, when they're old, they'll not depart from it. That's the game. That's the game of God. It's in the Bible. If you and, and just like this, if you teach a child negative stuff, guess what? If you teach them to sell dope at an early age, guess what they're going to do? When they get older, they're going to sell dope. Okay, let's break it down a little bit further. If you smoke cigarettes when you were earlier, younger, and you got two or three kids, it's probably a guarantee that one of those children is going to smoke cigarettes too. It's a, good, it's a guarantee that one of them going to do it. If you drink a lot, you got an alcoholic spirit. Because see, there are some things where people can drink, but then there are people that got an alcoholic spirit in their family. Yeah. Yeah. And unless we kill that thing, I'm talking about faith, because some things are only gotten rid of by faith. Yeah. Some things you ain't going to be able to pay nobody money for. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care how much money we have, but there were people over there at that cancer center they were going through the same thing. Some, some of them were saying, we, we travel over, over 100 miles just to come to Winston-Salem to get treatment. Every day, five days a week, we saw them. But you know what? God is so good. We're talking about faith. There were some other believers up in there. Man, we would come, we'd come up in there, and every day we had church. You see how God worked that thing out? Man, and when you look at this man, he, he's older than me. When you look at him, you wouldn't even think he had cancer. Because him and my wife, they're walking up in there at the same time. Boy, we had church. Amen. And we friends on Facebook right now. Every now and then again, I, I'll see his post, him and his family. And every now and then again, he'll see my post with me and my family. Amen. I'm talking about God is real. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it, see, by it, his gift. Also by faith. And by it, he being, he being dead, yet speaking. I, I said last week, there are people that are going on to glory now, but they but their gift, their gift's still here. Every now and then again, you have to go and test that thing. See, don't don't think when somebody get up when when Erica get up here and start preaching, it didn't just happen. Grandkids been in his ministry, children been in his ministry. You think it's by chance that you guys are here? Like I said to y'all last week, it may be one of y'all up here. I remember when I was a kid and I said, man, I want to stand up there behind the poor bit like Reverend J.D. Allgood. You see what I'm saying? You remember the lady with the issue of blood? They still preaching about her years, years and years, years later. You remember, you remember the story about Zacchaeus? When they told Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down here. Today is the day delivering salvation come to your house. People looked at Jesus like he was crazy. Why are you going to his house? First of all, he was a tax collector. And he, and he taxed everybody. Oh, he was a thief. <laughs> Overcharged people for their taxes and then lined his pockets with it. But you know what that man did? That man took all he had and gave back to the poor and his whole family got saved that night. Amen. And they said he was a shortcut. Minister Gill talked about people looking over you. See, people looked over him. That's probably one of the reasons why he got back at him. He became a tax collector because I'm going to bring y'all back for all those short jokes. You think, you think people don't do that? They do it every day. They do it every day. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death 
and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. See, that's why I made that comment about my daughter. When, when you listen to your parents, you might not agree with what they say, but if you're willing to listen, you're going to get rewarded for it. You're going to get rewarded big time. But, let me ask you a question. Uh, let me go to verse number six. Verse number six, it says, but without faith, it, it is impossible to please him. Amen. Who? God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. So you got to believe that he is. Amen. He is everything that you need. Amen. I'm not going to lie to you and act like while, while my wife was dealing with that cancer, I'm not going to lie and say, say it was easy. Man, there, there were some days just getting in the car and going to the store. That, that was a moment that I could have to kind of get myself back together so I could go back home and, and, and make sure she was okay. Not only that, not only while we're battling with, she's battling with cancer, our bishop battling with cancer. Yeah. Whole family going through. Yeah. Yeah. Pandemic going on. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot, a lot more going on. But here's the thing. God is always faithful. Oh, always faithful, man. Amen. The question I want to ask you, are you willing to do what it takes to increase or build up your faith? Are you willing to do that? Amen. These are some of the things that Pastor Eric said you can do. Everybody repeat out to me. Something good is going to happen to me today. See, faith is, and this is what this is my this is the way I said. Faith is saying what God says, believing what God says, and doing what God says. You have to be really careful about what you say. I talk about me in a way that I want to talk be talked about. You know, people say. Treat people the way you want to be treated. I, I don't say treat people the way you want to be treated. Guess what? Everybody don't, don't want you treating them the same way. First of all, I like pentos. If I treat you the way I want to be treated, I'm going to get you a pinto. And you may not even like pinto. You might like llama beans. So treat people the way they want to be treated. Then you good. I know what they mean. Treat people the way. In other words, I, I want you to treat me nice, so I'm going to treat you nice. That's really what they're saying. You sow good things into people's life, guess what happens? Good things are going to be sown into your life. But it all starts, I'm going to add a different, I'm going to add, add, I'm going to add another thing. Faith takes place in two places. Everybody put your hand on your mouth. Now take, take the other hand and put it on your stomach. So that's the heart, the spirit of man, that's the heart. Faith takes place in those two places. Why? I say put your hand over your mouth because you don't need to let everything come out your mouth. Yeah. There's some things that, what's it go out there? Right. You can't pull it back. Right. It's not like an email. If you hit send, right. you, can, you can pull it back. And you were hoping somebody did not get that email before it had a chance to be retracted. Amen. Amen. But what you put it out there, man, I had some. I had somebody say something to me. They said, you wear them bow ties to try to hide your, your, uh, what you don't really have. And Katie said, really? That's what we're going to do today? That's what we're going to do? See, they said that because that's what they've been saying the whole time before they got in my presence. Right. And it just rolled right on out. Now, now, now I'm a minister, but... You know, I'm, you know, I come from the other side of town and, you know, and I was like, what you mean? Right. That part. Yeah. That part. I was like, what you mean? But I had to quickly get back in faith because, you know, I was about like one of the disciples, that disciple pulled out that blade and cut that dude's ear off when he was fronting on Jesus. <laughs> Jesus had to take that ear back and put it back on that fellow. If you think Jesus didn't have somebody around him that would fight, you sadly mistaken. 
One of them would cuss. And the other one would fight. You know he had to fight. He pulled, he pulled a blade out on the guy. All he did was just say something out, out of the left side of his face to Jesus. He pulled out a blade and cut the nail. That's precision. That'd be me. I would have cut his face. I would have cut his neck. <laughs> but he sliced his ear. Don't let what other people say about you determine who you are. Amen. See? And you know what I told him? I said, no. I don't I don't wear these bow ties because I'm trying to hide who I am. I wear these bow ties because I like them. Right. See, I know what God told me to do. And you know what I said? I used to wear neckties at my last job. I wore neckties and a sport coat. Yeah, every day. But here's the reason why God wanted me to make sure when I go to work, I dress up. Because see, there was somebody else that looked like me that needed to be able to see there was somewhere else they could go. Yeah. See, that's what, because I heard, I know I heard from God. And I said, I'm not going to let nobody dictate to me. I don't care. You wear your jeans every day if you want to. I wear jeans. But even when I wear my jeans, my wife said, you don't know how to dress down. <laughs> she tell the truth. See, my dress down is not dressed down the way everybody else see it. But I am dressed down. But see, I'm a king's kid. See, you, I don't know about y'all, but I grew up where I didn't give her the outfit but two, three times a year. We got a 4th of July outfit, Easter, and Christmas. Amen. And usually we held them to back to school. Right. <laughs> Amen. Don't get her dirty. <laughs> you better not get her dirty. You come home, you put on what? Your play clothes. <laughs> Man, you better ask somebody. I know how good my God is. And you know what? People thought we were rich. Do you know we had school teachers that would come pick us up for the projects? Then the day they would come pick us up and take them to the house. You can't do that these days, you know. A lot of stuff they did back then, you know, you just can't do it. Go full crazy. See, the, 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 the spirit of God, the spirit of, of the enemy has got over and taken over in these areas. But anyway, that's for another sermon. But they would come pick us up. I'm talking about see. God saw it before you see it. Thank you. Yeah. See, they took us out of the projects to show us some better things in life. Amen. Amen. I remember a few years ago, we took a whole group of kids skiing. I'd never been skiing myself. Ooh. But these are kids that came from right back over here behind the church. All around in this neighborhood. Why did we do that? Because the Lord said, gave a, the man of God a mandate, get these kids. That's right. That's right. Why? Because we don't get them, guess what? The streets will. So we took them up there so they can see what the other folks, what we had. This is so funny when you ain't never done nothing like that. We had on, we told them, put on layers of clothes. Ain't none of us been skiing. <laughs> we said, make sure y'all put two or three layers of clothes on. We all put two or three layers of clothes on. And got up there about burnt up. Man, we were pulling off clothes. You know, everybody else had them little jumpsuits that you pull over. We ain't had none of that. We had our three clothes on. Boy, the people were looking at us like, what are y'all doing up here? <laughs> but you know what? We didn't care. Because when God opened up a door for us, Boy, we take over. So let me tell you, those guys, man, me and my wife and a few other people, we had to take lessons. But you know our kids, they didn't take no lessons. They put them skis on, boop, boop, locked in, and then they went down. And then me being the scoutmaster that I am, you know, I ain't going to let nobody pump me. Oh, scoutmaster Ron, you scared. I let them boys convince me to go up on the second highest level. I was crazy. That was crazy. So once you go up, you got to come down. And all I could think was, well, what you doing? It's, you got to go down now. I did good, though. I did good, D. Till I got almost at the bottom. And I don't know what happened. One skin went that way. The other skin went that way. And that thing I know, I looked up. One was still on my foot. And the other was sliding on down the hill. They said, Scott, run. You did it. 
Yeah, but I ain't going back up there no more. I went, I went and got my wife, man. I said, y'all go have fun. Amen. But what I'm talking about is, are you willing to do what it takes to increase or build your, your faith? See, sometimes it's not even about us. Sometimes we need to go places just so our kids can see. That's all right. That's all right. First time I flew on the plane, the first time we took a trip, we didn't have luggage. <laughs> I'm talking about faith, man. I think the man over and the woman of God had to give us a piece of luggage. We had plastic bags. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What a little lady. She looked up. We put our little, you know, when they check your bag, we put our little plastic. I think it might have been a food line bag. Just let it been a run on through. But you know what though? <laughs> but I was so happy. A little kid for the project, man. I'm flying. I'm flying, D. And hey, let me tell you, I'm talking about faith. Because see, Somebody has to be willing to get you out there. That's right. That's right. And so while we're up there flying, that's why I say God is so real. So I don't I don't flew several several times after that now. All right now. So but somebody gotta show you where to go. Somebody gotta give you a vision. Yeah. Uh, and so here I am looking at through the clouds, and I saw this cloud, and we rose up above the storm. And I looked down at a cloud, and rain was coming through the cloud. Rain was coming through the cloud, and we were above the cloud, and there was no rain on top of the cloud. You, you, you mean to tell me God is not real, that he can create something like that? Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Do you know I have prayed? <laughs> I thought about hung around. I have prayed and stopped the rain so I could finish cutting my grass. Amen. 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 Yep. Now I remember the story our bishop talked about Uncle Ralph and him while they were out there fishing. And, and Bishop prayed that the rain would stop. He said, Uncle Ralph, look over there at him. <laughs> and the rain stopped. But this is why he's here right now. Amen. That's why he's here. Somebody got somebody got to be willing to go that extra mile. Amen. Can you move to the next slide? Galatians 3.11 Pastor Amos said, believe in it, saying it, and acting on it. That's faith. Those are the three things you need to do. Believe it. Believe what God tells you about your life. Even if you don't see it, you got to believe it. Why? Because see, God already saw you down there. He saw you. He saw you. Right now, people may not even understand you, but it's okay. Do you know they understand Jesus? See, you're a peculiar person. Don't worry about it. They don't understand you. God understands you. He says, say it. Say what? Say it. Whatever it is that God says about you. Say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and I'm not beneath. Everything I put my hand to prosper. I am highly favored. I am a king's kid. Amen. Do you know what? I was looking at the royals, and they don't pay taxes. Do you believe that? They don't even pay no taxes. They are servants of the state. They're servants of the kingdom. But you know what? They got all the money. They got all the gold. They get a stipend. They get a certain amount of money. But they don't pay no taxes, but here's what they do. They give a certain amount. Yeah. I watched when, when, when Queen Elizabeth passed, and they passed it down, passed it over to her son, and he had to sign all these decrees saying, I'm willing to do this, I'm willing to do that. See, we've been praying about having a servanthood spirit. Yeah. Now, that's just tradition. That's just in their bylaws, but I'm talking about when you're willing to do that. See, a, a big part of their life is they don't work. But this is what they do. Their job is to go around and serve the people of England. Yeah. And all the people that are up under up under their 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 uh, kingship, whatever, I don't know exactly what to call it, because I ain't quite done all the studying on it. <laughs> but here's the thing, what I realized, wherever you go and you're a part of their kingdom, 
guess what? You get represented as such. Like, when we go to another country, and they always say, when you go to another country, always know where the American embassy is. Right. Always. Right. Always. Call your congressman, let them know, like when my daughter get ready to go to study abroad, guess what? I need to call my congressman and let them know, hey, my daughter's going to be over here. Right. Right. She's a child of the king. I need y'all to treat her as such. Right. Right. So if anything pop off, she can go to the embassy and say, I am an American yeah. citizen. Yeah. Right. And guess what? They have to go, if she want a whopper, they have to go get her a whopper. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because see, that's a part of what who she is being an American. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But even more so, being a child of the king, yeah. Amen. guess what you can do? 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. So it's not about what you see. It's about what you saw. You remember what, what, what God said? Everything he, he made, it was good. Yes. He said it six times. Yes. He made the land. He made the darkness. He created what? Everything. The, the, the beasts of the field. The, the, the beasts in the ocean. But that seventh time, after he made us, boy, he looked up and said, behold, it is very good. Yeah. Wow. Amen. So every now and then again, take a look at yourself in the mirror. Right. Don't pay attention to what you see, because it may not be what, what, what you see may not be what you want. But you look in the mirror and you say, you are very good. Yeah. See, don't ever let nobody tell you that you're not. Because see, when we, when we lower our standard, guess what? People will dog you out. But if you put your foot down, they don't know how to take it. They don't know how to take it. Y'all be trying to figure out how that guy did that girl. Because the boy put the foot down. I said, how you get that girl? I put my foot down. And sometimes they have to build a bill of money in their hand too. And don't ask them for nothing in return. Yeah. See, that's my wife. <laughs> I gave I gave her twenty dollars, boy. We were teenagers. I gave her twenty dollars. She was at the store and pin a profit. Balling. <laughs> well, I was balling, boy. Eight to quad. I just got paid on Wednesday. Man, I saw that girl at the store. My money. That's right. Not your mama's money. I worked hard at Mars Furniture for that money, boy. I ate sawdust. It was an investment. Look at it. See, bad people now. That $20 investment been paying off. Still paying off. Amen. 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 See, money wonder. I'm telling you, man. See, I sowed that seed. Yeah. I sowed the seed. Yeah. Your seed will make room for you. I know they say your gift will make room for you, but what is a gift? It's a seed. Your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. See, this gift that I have, that's why when they said something about my no time, I ain't tripped. Because, see, I know who I am. I know whose I am. And now, I'm testing it more and more. I'm testing it. Romans 10 and 17, so then by faith, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you say God's word about your life, no doubt, I will be a millionaire to the body of Christ. So you notice why I said, I didn't say a millionaire to everybody. I said, I'll be a millionaire to the body of Christ. I will teach people how to get out from under the curse of the enemy. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because I'm a blessed man. They said, blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. I, I was talking to Jay this morning. We were talking about how, look at Kanye. Kanye is going more and more towards the things of God. But guess what? He made his money on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So there has, there has to be a reversal. Oh, he'll be back. But when he come back with this billion this time, ain't nobody going to be able to take it. I know, I know you don't agree with him. I ain't saying I agree with everything, but what I'm saying is, years ago when he made Jesus walk, did you know his father was heavily into the church? His father was a former black panther. But guess what? His father had him in church three, four times a week playing music. 
So, so when he did Sunday service, they called, they said it's a religious cult. But the man had five, six hundred, a thousand young people coming out there lifting their hand to Jesus. Oh, yeah, I said it too. Because they out there, and all I thought was, man. But when Jesus was out preaching, where was he at? He wasn't in the synagogue. Matter of fact, when he was up in the synagogue, oh, they were ready to kill him because he sat down in a chair like he was the chosen one. See, they had they have a chair set aside for, for Christ when he when we return. And they said he wasn't the one. You know what he did? He went to the fields where he had 5,000 uh, men. Thousands of women. You know there's always more women than there's men. And you know there's a bunch of kids going where the women go. They're going to read their children. Amen. Amen. Next slide says, do you have a picture of what you desire? Look at that. Ain't that nice? See, I saw myself preaching before I even preach. I saw, I said this last week, I saw my wife walking down the spiral staircase, but I needed to get her a picture of it. You remember that movie, Waiting to Exhale? And that guy had that closet with all his clothes laid, laid out? See, that's my closet right there. You see, that's my closet on the bottom half. That's, that's my wife's closet on the top half. But you can't see, but that, that whole area is a bathroom. You see, you see, you see, you see? See, you got to have a vision where you're going. Do I have that? Do I have that kind of money in my pocket? It don't even matter. Because see, when you're a king's kid, do you know right now, the royal family, they don't pay for nothing, know where they go. They don't pay for nothing. You don't need money. When you're a king's kid, just your name alone. I watched this. I watched this clip. This guy, he said, "I'm gonna change the narrative about Africa." So there was this guy lived in the. Uh, he grew up in the uh, the forest in Nigeria, and he lived with him and his mama and his daddy. That's where they grew up. He grew up in the in the in the forest, and the nearest village was the poorest village. So he was even more poor than the people in the village. At least the people in the village, they had huts. He didn't have huts. They just lived in a forest or whatever his parents, his dad built. But this is what this is what he said. They showed a picture of this 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 building that he owned. There's two of them side by side. And the building is called Signature. Two of them. And they're high end condominiums or what we call apartment homes in California but and they said well why did you call them signature because all it took for me to make it was my signature <laughs> good God Almighty I don't know if y'all caught that I don't know if y'all caught that in other words all it took was his signature because he paid yeah. he got so much money all he had to do was sign his name all we got to do is sign our Heavenly Father's name. Amen. Dream big. Like Katie and Erica said last week, get an imagination for where you want to go. Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, And the Lord answered me, and he said, Do what? Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. So I talked about we've been confessing certain things. I've been confessing that my daughter get into the best school with the scholarships, with everything. Amen. And even if it doesn't turn out the way you've been confessing, do you stop? No. Guess what? She in school right now. Amen. And at the end of the day, I don't even know how it's all going to work out. But I do know how it's going to work out. Because God got us. See, the, the seed that you sow, the seed when you put money in the offering, put a name on it. Amen. 
right? Believe God for the impossible. Amen. Make it so big, like I heard Pastor Joel Osteen said, make it, make it so big it's a God kind of thing to have to do it. Amen. See that, that crib right there? Do you know people grew up in, in cribs like that? They've been living in those kind of cribs all their lives. Amen. And we're just hoping to get in one. But guess what? If you get a vision for it, you can be there. Amen. 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 Matthew 6 and 33. How do you get there? Don't seek the stuff, but seek the maker of the stuff. Amen. If we seek the maker of the stuff, that stuff show up. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What are all these things? All the things that you desire that God put in your heart. Amen. You want to have a good marriage? Seek God. Amen. You want to get into the best university? Seek God, man. Give him some of your, this is my grandma used to say, give God some of your time. Yes. Yes. I told my daughter, don't get up there and forget God. Amen. Give God some of your time. Amen. So you know what I did? I told her, I said, so we do a Bible study at our house and with our family. And I said, uh, I want you to teach Bible study. Amen. And her lesson was on something that I gave her some time ago. I didn't even realize, I didn't even remember I gave her those scriptures. She said, she said, Daddy, you gave me these scriptures. I said, I did I said, boy, your dad is on it, boy. He's on the things of God. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Right. I'm not saying my wife and I are perfect. But here's the thing. We try to make sure we see God. Amen. If you miss it, young, young men, young ladies, if you miss it, repent, ask God to forgive you, and get right back in there. Right. Never be ashamed to, to stand up as a believer. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Everybody doing good? So, how do you change the game? And you live by faith. First, it starts with salvation. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved. Amen. Once you get saved, then you receive the Holy Spirit, and it's that spirit of the living God that will guide you and direct you in every single area of your life. Amen. But you got to be willing to let him take you. Amen. So, repeat after me. If you're out there in Facebook world, and you just at the point where you don't even know how you're going to be able to do it. You're just tired. Man, I got tired. I did. I got tired. My cousin called me and said, you going to the club? No, nah, I ain't going to drive. I just gave my life to Christ. Amen. You know what she said? She said, all right, I'll see you in two weeks. Get <laughs> <laughs> out, flip. Give me no kind of Boy, tell me how she believed in me. But that was my girl. That was that was my best friend before I met my wife, my cousin. But you know what? And you know what? And this is what the world do. If the world make you a promise, they come back. So she came back two weeks later, Thursday night, trying to get me to go to side effects. I ain't been to side effects yet. All right. Matter of fact, side effects is now a church. Amen. So I might go back over there now. <laughs> God, my wife was mad because I got saved and she was just getting to the point where she could go to the club. <laughs> Too late. I'm gone now, boy. I'm gone. Hallelujah. But you know what? My cousin came back two weeks later. I ain't going to the club. I said, cuz, I'm serious. I said, I'm done. I gave it up. But I'm telling you what will happen when you're willing to give it all up for God. So if you say that prayer, confess with your mouth, and say, Lord, I repent. I ask you to forgive me, cleanse me, wash me, and make me whole. When you say that, immediately salvation comes to your house. Amen. And you know what? That same cousin, because I, I stood and I said, you know what? Nah, because I'm good. She's like, nah, I got you. Yeah, I said, because I just got paid last night. You know, Mars got paid every Wednesday. You know, the middle of the week. I said, nah, I just got paid. I'm good. Do you know she came and gave her life to Christ the same way? Yeah. 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 
See, somebody got to be willing to take a stand. Amen. If one of y'all are willing to take a stand for the things of God, I guarantee you, you're going to have somebody to follow suit to. Amen. Now, if this ministry has been a blessing to you like it has been to us, I go to feed 200 families a month. We want to be a blessing to young people. I, I said it last week. I'm just talking about some of the things that, that, that God allows us to do in this ministry. This whole church we got together, man, people started bringing in book bags, backpacks, and uh, paper, pens, and pencils. And then we had a back-to-school jam a few months ago. Amen. People came from Thomasville, Lexington. Man, they came from all over the place because other places were not having it. Because the pandemic hurt a lot of churches. Did we really have it? We can't afford not to be a blessing to people. Amen. But, but what happens is when you get together as a collective, man, we got it done. Amen. Amen. So guess what? I remember when my daughter was little, how people gave. Yes. See, see, you got to give back. Right. So this is what it's all about. I know they're talking about, I ain't giving that preacher nothing. The preacher ain't asking you nothing. Asking nothing for you. All they're doing is asking you to give something to you. Yeah. Uh, and the great thing about it is if you donate to High Point Christian Center, you can designate to where you wanted to go and how you wanted to go. You heard our pastor, he can get up here and he said all the time, we're going we're gonna to give it to where you wanted to give it. This church is blessed. Amen. You know why it's blessed? Because Amen. people have sown seed Amen. all down through the years. Yeah. This church has been known to go into other churches and bless them real good. Amen. Ain't that changed? Amen. All right. Let's receive a million dollars. Hallelujah. So if you guys want to be a blessing to the ministry, you can give your free will offered by Cash App. You can go to HP. CCNC Giving, or you can do it by PayPal, or you can go to our website at HPC, HP Christian Center dot com. That's HP Christian Center dot com, or you can go to PO Box fifty two zero three, High Point, North Carolina two seven two six five. So we want to thank you guys for coming out and, and being a part with us. You can join us back uh, next week for our hour of power, our Bible study night, uh, 6.30. And you can join us next Sunday while man and woman of God will be back in the building ready to go with the things of God next Sunday at 9 a.m. Make sure you come and check out our praise and worship at 8.45. 9 o'clock, we'll be live on Facebook. And so, come. You can sit out in the parking lot. I know y'all feel concerned about COVID. You can sit out in the park a lot. We got a little station. You can turn it on and you can listen to it. Amen. 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 We're praying for you right here from the inside of the building. Praying for you in your car. Bless them, Lord. Heal them. Amen. And then you can drive on down the street and get you a biscuit because you're going to get out early enough even before breakfast is over with. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 If all hearts and minds are satisfied, we're going to see you guys Wednesday night. God bless you. And if we don't see you again, but, you know, check the week next week. Be a blessing to somebody. Give thanks to God for all he's done. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you.